While Donald Trump's open admiration for Laura Loomer made headlines this week, it's important to remember that Trump has complimented her a lot over the past year, all while she has pushed her gross conspiracies. This woman is amazing. Laura Loomer. Where is she? Where is Laura? She is amazing. Every damn day we see another story about illegal aliens going to the Ritz-Carlton, illegal aliens getting uh, free flights, illegal aliens getting free clothes and free cell phones, and someone's going to snap. Someone's going to snap. It's going to happen. And you know what? <laughs> I'm not going to care when it happens. A fantastic woman, a true patriot, Laura Loomer. Laura, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. If Kamala Harris gets elected as president of the United States, we are. We are going to have an Islamic caliphate in this country. It's great to have you. You've been really very special. You work hard and you are a, uh, you are a very opinionated lady. I have to tell you that. And in my opinion, I like that. Joining me now is Sarah Matthews. She served as the deputy press secretary during the Trump administration. OK, Sarah, none of us are surprised anymore by a lot of the things Trump does. But help us understand how somebody who is a conspiracy theorist, who's a 9-11 truther, who says all the things that we've been talking about in this show, goes from that, from a fringy person, to being on the plane to the debate and kind of in, in the unofficial inner circle of Donald Trump. Well, I think you are the company you keep, and this just goes to show what his character and judgment is if this is who he's choosing to surround himself with. I mean, Americans at home might not be familiar with Laura Loomer. She's not necessarily a mainstream mm -hmm. name, but she is as fringe as fringe gets. And that is what is so scary, is that now she has the ear of the potential next president. And to think that he even brought her to a 9-11 memorial event last week, this is someone who just last year was saying that 9-11 was an inside mm -hmm. job. And that's just one of the many conspiracy theories that she's pushed. She said a lot of other disgusting, vile things that I wouldn't even repeat on air, in particular about the vice president, Kamala Harris. And to think then that this is who Donald Trump is keeping in his inner circle is really concerning. No, no question about it. What, what is appealing about her to him? Is, that she, is it that she is complimenting him? Is it more than that? I think that she's willing to defend anything that he says or does. And he likes that. She's the ultimate sycophant. And so I think that he likes that she'll defend him. She's clearly angling for some sort of job in the administration, I would imagine. Maybe she wants to be White House uh, press secretary. She's posted about that yes. before. And, yeah. <laughs> and that is what is most concerning to me, because I've talked about this threat of who will be with Donald Trump if he is elected president again, who will be staffing a mm -hmm. second administration. I like to think that during the first administration, you had people of good character who wanted to staff him and would push back on him. But in a second administration, you're going to get the Laura Loomers of the world who are in his ear, who are the ones helping run the country. I mean, to think that she would be in the White House potentially and serving in one of the most important roles. And uh, she's clearly a known liar if she pushes conspiracy theories and her job could potentially be being the spokesperson for the president. It's terrifying. And so that is what, when I talk about the threat of a second Trump administration, this is the kind of thing we're referring to. And so it's not crazy to think that he's going to be surrounding himself with these crazy types of people who will be a bunch of yes men and women say and do whatever he pleases. I mean, I just want to just stop on this for just a second, because you worked for him in the past. You've come out and spoken out against him. And you're saying, like, this is a person who I just introduced to people who didn't know her before. Some people may have known her before, who could end up having a very prominent role in a second Trump term. That's what we're looking at here. Exactly. That's what we're looking at, is that this is the type of person who could potentially have the ear of the leader of the free world. Someone who traffics in conspiracy theories, says racist, awful, vile things. And I, it makes me nervous about what um, a potential staff for a second Trump term could look like. Because when you think about the cabinet level, obviously there's the Senate confirmation process. There's a little bit there that he can't maybe put people in posts that are as extreme or crazy. But when you think about White House staff, for the most part, they wouldn't have control over that. So they're not confirmed. Hire, so he could pick whoever he wants. Exactly. He could hire folks like Laura Loomer. And there's plenty of other people on his campaign, too, that are not willing to push back on him. And so you're not going to get the people like the John Kellys mm -hmm. and the Mark Espers in the first administration who were willing to tell Donald Trump no or to tell him that, you know, he lost the election, for example, mm -hmm. and push back on some of his worst instincts. In a second term, you're going to get these people who are encouraging it.
He, there are a couple of people, and, and I mean, you, we've talked about this before. You have spoken out publicly about Donald Trump and you're concerned about him. Everybody has not chosen to do that. There were a number of people, including Marjorie Taylor Greene and Lindsey Graham, who spoke out about their concerns about Laura Loomer. But at the same time this week, Donald Trump was pushing conspiracy theories about Haitian immigrants in Springfield, Ohio, and they seem to be either okay with that or unwilling to speak out about that. What, what do you make of that? Yeah, I mean, I think there isn't actually that much daylight between a Laura Loomer and a Donald Trump. Look, they both push um, racist conspiracy theories, as you mentioned, with the Haitian immigrants in Springfield. I'm from Ohio, so I take this uh, story very personally. And to think that these schools and hospitals are coming under bomb threats, and then when Donald Trump is asked about it, what does he say? He doesn't say, Not oh, much. we should stop political violence. This is unacceptable in this country and we need to bring down the temperature. Instead, he pours gasoline on the fire because this is exactly what he wants to do. It's why he uh, killed the bipartisan immigration deal that was in Congress, because he wants to run on this issue and to rile up his supporters and to tap into people's fears and, and is willing to spread lies about this. I mean, J.D. Vance even said on air this morning on another network that they created a story mm-hmm. to try to get the media to care about this. And so I, I don't know, though, if you're winning necessarily this election when you're out there saying things like they're eating the cats and dogs and you're hanging out with Laura Loomer and tweeting, I hate Taylor Swift. These are not the things that Americans care about. Americans want to talk about health care. They want to talk about jobs. They want to talk about being able to afford groceries and put food on their table and feed their families. And Donald Trump is not talking about these things. No question. Sarah Matthews, thank you so much, as always, for joining me. I really appreciate it. Coming up, beyond the obvious, Taylor Swift and Oprah Winfrey had one very big thing in common this week. They both used their platform to shine a light on a major issue. We're going to talk about that when we come right back. 